The Holy Gospel according to Mark. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus still stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for allowing us to be your people to come and worship you. We ask that in this time, in this place, as we are digging into your word, that you guard our hearts and our minds from distraction, and that you open our eyes and our ears, our thoughts, and our actions to what you are up to in, through, and around us. In your name we pray. Amen. This morning we are nearing the end of Mark chapter 10. If you remember, we've been in Mark 10 for about four weeks now. It started four weeks ago with Pastor Diane preaching on the divorce text and reminding us through that text and through the text in Corinthians, I believe it was, that we are united, that we are one body, that we are together in unity with one another, that the head needs the hands and the feet, the head needs the rest of the body, the rest of the body needs the head. We need one another. And then we had Ricky Defoe here, reminding us about the moose passing through the eye of the needle. That Sunday, we heard the story of the young rich man coming to Jesus and asking how he saves himself. And that was the answer that he got. It's easier for a moose to go through, or a camel, to go through an eye of a needle than it is for you to save yourself. But with God, all things are possible. That Sunday we were, reminded that, uh, we were reminded that it is not us that does the saving. It is God that does the saving for us. That it is not our actions or what we do, but what God has done. Last week we were, we were reminded when the disciples were arguing about who is the greatest among them. That it isn't about who is the greatest. It's about who is going to humble themselves to serve the others. Who is going to not have to be right? Who is not going to have to be superior over somebody else, but instead humble themselves and be the servant of all? This week as we end Mark 10, I feel like we're getting a picture of what it looks like when all of those teachings come together. You see, there's a man, a blind man, sitting outside of the city. He's somebody that the rest of society thought that they didn't need. Somebody that they didn't care about. That's why as they were coming through, as this man heard the voice of Jesus of Nazareth, and obviously he had heard of Jesus, the son of David, that son of David, meaning that, that this blind man is proclaiming that Jesus is the Messiah. This blind man is saying, I know who you are. I know what you're doing by saying that you are the son of David. So as they're, they're walking on this road, this blind man calls out, Jesus, son of David, I know who you are. Have mercy on me. The others in the crowd, the disciples, those that are closest to Jesus that should have been listening to this message for a while now, rebuked him, sternly telling him to be quiet. And that's when Jesus stopped 
and said, bring him to me. Here's where we get that second picture, that second image of what we've been learning about in in Mark 10. This man throws off his cloak. To me, the first few times, I didn't realize the meaning of that, realize the impact of that. But the reality is that cloak is what this man had. That cloak was his shelter. That cloak was his home. That cloak was his warmth. That was what he had for protection against the rest of the world. His cloak, his only possession, he threw off of him and left it to come to Jesus. Remember that sell all your possessions that we heard? This man didn't sell it. He just left it to come. He comes over and he, he says, Jesus. Jesus asks him, What do you need? I want to see. And Jesus says to him, Because of your faith, he says, Go, your faith has made you well. Go. That's an operative word here, right? Go, your faith has made you well. It's something that God had already done for him. God had already made it so that he would be able to see, but he was told to go. So in this story, in this message this morning, where are you being called to go? Where are you being called to go? to build a Christian unity? Where are you being called to go to humble yourself and serve others? Where are you being called to go to understand somebody who believes differently than you do? We all have that. We all need that. We all have people that, we all have times where we just don't understand others. We don't understand how somebody could come from that point of view or how somebody could believe this or that or the other. But when do we go to take the time to understand, to get to know somebody? Where are you being called to go, to get rid of, to just leave some of your possessions, some of the things that are holding you back and keeping you, the the shelter and the safety that are keeping you from being able to go into something new or to walk into some place that's scary or difficult for you to go? In the second service, we're having a baptism. And at each one of our baptisms, our parents made promises on our behalf. Next week on Halloween, on Reformation Sunday, we have have youth who are affirming their baptism. They are taking on those baptismal promises for themselves. Those promises to bring justice and peace to all of the earth. Those promises to live in unity. Those promises to come to the Lord's table. Those promises to be in community with one another. And notice, when Bartimaeus got up to go, he went into community. He went from the outside into the group that was shutting him out. Into the group that rebuked him, that said, no, you you stay quiet and over there. He came and he followed into that group to live in community with one another. Church, we made those baptismal promises. Our parents made them on our behalf and then we accepted them at our confirmation, at our affirmation. So we have the choice. And that's the thing. Because of what God first did for us, We have a choice on what we could do. And this choice has no effect on our standing with God, whether we're we're getting into heaven or not getting into heaven, anything like that. That choice isn't going to affect our standing with God because God has already chosen us. So we have a choice on how we want to live our lives. If we want to live into those promises, living in community, seeking justice, seeking to do the right thing, coming to the Lord's table, doing all of those things that we promised 
to do. We have a choice. We've been set free to make that choice. To live into those actions. To get up and go. And going doesn't have to be something big. Going might look like going down the street to LSS and helping homeless youth learn how to cook. Getting up and go might be making a pan of pumpkin bread or apple bars to bring to the community meal. Getting up and going might be going to the local mosque and learning about somebody who believes differently than we do and seeing that maybe we're a little bit more alike than what we think. Getting up and going might be showing up to our racial justice talks on, on that just, I think they just ended on Thursday night. Our, we had our final one for the Native Americans and Christianity. Getting up and going might be cleaning out your closet and realizing that you have eight very good coats and you use one of them and there's somebody that may need it. Getting up and going may be coming and serving at the welcome desk. Getting up and going doesn't have to be something big about going far away or doing something huge. Getting up and going could be a small thing. It could be a series of small things. But this morning, we're being called to get up and go, to humble ourselves to serve others, and to remember that we do this because what God first did to us, did for us, so that we can live in unity with one another. I think I still have my quote from last week. I do. I'm going to remind you, and I'm going to leave you with a quote from last week from Congressman John Lewis. This quote is from Across That Bridge. It says, When the people are ready, this nation will change. Whenever the people finally reject the efforts to fragment their collective energies into warring factions and remember their divine union with one another, when they throw off material distractions and irrelevant negativity and hear their soul speak with one voice, they will rise up and whatever is in their path will either transform or transpire. Church, we're being called to get up and go. We're being called to throw off material distractions. We're being called to get over irrelevant negativity. We're being called to reject the fragmentation of our collective energies so that we could come together and go, so that we could be in community with one another, so that we can love God, love our neighbors, and love ourselves. We've been challenged over these four weeks, and now, as we end the chapter, we're being given an image of somebody who got it, of somebody who realized what Jesus was teaching. Bartimaeus trusted when he came running to God. Do you trust that God is going to answer the call that he's giving to you? That when you're called to get up and go, God is going to meet you where you're being called to go? And that even those small acts can be part of a much bigger picture. Church, where are you being called? And are you going to answer? Are you going to trust? Amen.